So we're going to start the next presentation. Uh, so it's uh, yet another uh, multimedia framework called Upipe, a uh, product I know a bit about. But this year, Raphael has agreed to do the presentation. So please give a warm welcome to Raphael Carré. Hello. Thank you. So a uh, little bit about uh, myself. I started uh, contributing uh, to VLC in 2006. And uh, I joined Upipe uh, three years ago. So, what what is Upipe? It's a, it's a GStreamer for broadcast. So, the big question is what is broadcast exactly? I've worked in, uh, for six years in broadcast, and I'm still uh, not sure exactly what it is. So, if I try to guess, it's uh, old school TV. I think when uh, when the first TVs were created in uh, black and white, this is a uh, distribution of, uh, of video or radio for millions or billions of people. So what, what do we need in, uh, in broadcast? We need um, high quality of service, 24 hours uh, per day. Uh, good, good quality because uh, people watch TV on a bigger and bigger screen, so it's not like uh, on a phone where you can have a 144 uh, video. It needs to be uh, the quality needs to be uh, very good. So, uh, as Christophe said, he created the project um, in around 2012. So about 15 years after creating VLC. So all the mistakes who were done in VLC and uh, which we still uh, suffer from today, they're gone. Your pipe is perfect. So it's it's the. Upipe is a pipeline, and of course, it comes with all the all the modules, the plugins, which you can connect together to do uh, anything you want. So it's uh, it's fast, of course. It's, it uses a model of event. So when you are not receiving. Uh, Anything the pipeline is uh, waiting on a, on a file descriptor, so it's not using any CPU. And as soon as you get the, something incoming, you are waken up by Paul, so you can handle it immediately. So on um, on Linux we use uh, libv, but on Windows uh, you could use the um, Enlightenment um, uh, eCore, libcore, but. Windows support is still uh, it's not there. There was some work done, but uh, the guy uh, left. So if you know about Windows and need a broadcast uh, framework, come and uh, we'll help you uh, at this part. So it's, it's a bit weird for something modern to use no threads. But actually, it's a lie. Each, each, um, each module runs on the main thread. So you don't have uh, synchronization problems in your pipeline, but what you can do is deport one module or part of the pipeline to another thread, and uh, we already have a, a, a synchronization using a lockless and a atomics when needed. So you can deport your pipeline and get uh, a thread for free, but from the view of the pipeline, you don't see the thread. Everything runs in sync. Wrong button. So, of course, it's uh, dynamic. So, you can uh, each module can add its own requirements, and so on and so on. For example, if uh, your hardware video needs some uh, specific stride, it needs to be aligned on uh, that many bits to, uh, to be able to perform uh, SIMD, or of course zero copy. You can. Um, the pipeline can render directly in the final buffer at every step, and uh, that's it. And um, so the the pipes themselves are really dumb. They just take something in and out and give you an interface for configuration. But we all the uh, all the logic is done in the application. So you just use the stupid pipes and you tell them what to do. So, as I said, uh, it's broadcast, so it needs to be uh, very reliable, because uh, 
you don't want to be sitting in front on the, on the, of the TV watching some news and uh, suddenly it goes a black screen for two seconds, then it comes back because something crashed in the data center. So we have a test suit, which is not complete, but we are working on uh, making it better. And um, we use uh, Valgrind, LibAssan, which m was uh, mentioned. And uh, we are fuzzing uh, individual pipes, especially the fr framers, since they receive um, uh, untrusted uh, input. So we use uh, AFL, and uh, oh, that's it. So what's new? Since uh, last, last first dem, I think we had a release around last first dem, so, and uh, another one is coming today. <laughs> so, um, 10 contributors, not many new people, but hopefully you will be uh, interested in uh, joining us. So about uh, one commit per day, blah, 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 some stats. Um, the, the pipeline itself didn't see many changes. There were some improvements, but uh, no bug fixes. So this is cool because it means that the, the pipeline itself is, as I said, perfect. <laughs> no, don't laugh, it's true. And, uh, but what we did, we created uh, many new modules, and uh, I'll talk about them. So the first one, the biggest one maybe, it's the Decklink Sync, so the, the Blackmagic cards, which do uh, SDI output. So it's... It, it was a lot of work because um, if you don't know the, these cards, the manufacturer gives a, an SDK, which is a cross-platform because it runs on a Linux Windows and, a, and Mac. But the problem is uh, it's, it's proprietary. Both the, the kernel driver and the user space uh, library, and it's crap. You have many, many, many problems with synchronization, if you if you add a, a, a reference clock, the signal will drop four seconds later or something. So you have to test and guess what's wrong. You ask them, uh, what's, wh wh why doesn't your stuff work? Ah, oh, yes, sorry, we'll fix it in the in the next release. But then they give you a new release, which added adds more bugs. So we have to we had to work around many many bugs, and now it's stable. So it's actually. Uh, working in a, on your TV. So if you're watching uh, your TV, that module might be behind. Uh, we support uh, teletext in a vertical ancillary space. So this is a vertical ancillary is a, a technology from the old days. It's been there for 50 years. And uh, after the switch to digital TV, they kept it because the guys, they, they had learned to work with old technologies and uh, they didn't want to change. So we had to, to follow. So teletext uh, is mostly used in Europe. In the US, it's uh, closed captions, which we support too. We also do uh, SMT337. What is it exactly? It's a method for transporting um, compressed audio over a PCM channel. So you have a, it's, it's all digital. So you have a, a start code, which is an audio sample which would not make sense in a real world, in real audio. And when you notice this start code in the, in the audio, it means the, the PCM samples that follow are actually compressed data. So you can transport uh, in a stereo track, so two channels PCM. You could transport a compressed AC3 with a 5.1, or Dolby E, which is a, a codec that is only used in broadcast. <coughs> and there was a, a decoder added to FFmpeg uh, last year. It's not much known. And also in uh, SMT337, you can transport PCM. So you have PCM, you add a start code, and then PCM behind. So it doesn't make sense, but you can do it. Uh, we also added the ASI sync. ASI is um, a bit like uh, SDI. It's a format for for trans transmitting a video. And uh, we, we already had um, a source module, so to receive the ASI signal and uh, we transmit it uh, as a transport, transport stream, for example. So, and it's 
I mean, it's, it's designed for MPEG-GS because it uses the same uh, 27 megahertz clock. We had the uh, DVB-CSA, which is a, a, an encryption uh, system for, for satellite, so for pay TV. So you can do it uh, both sides, encryption and decryption. And uh, it's actually a, a fork. The original version uh, came from VideoLAN, and uh, that, that guy forked it, and he added um, SIMD, and he actually devised divide the bit slicing uh, implementation, so it's very, very fast. I think a uh, couple gigs per second on modern hardware. So we did the uh, uh, FEC, so for the error correction, which uses uh, SMT, the SMT standard. So it's part of the series which define uh, SDI over IP, but it's not specific to, to, to SDI over IP. So any RTP stream, you can add FEC and we can uh, receive it. So you can choose your, the, the size of your matrix. And uh, sometimes uh, FEC is not enough. You have too many losses, so you can't reconstruct the matrix perfectly. You're losing your video. So we also added the uh, ARQ. Uh, it's, I mean, at last NAB, there was a new new solution by uh, iVision called SRT, Secure Reliable Transport. And SRT is a mix of FEC and uh, retransmission. But we chose to use the existing standard, although we don't know any other implementation of, of this standard, so we can't test it in the real world except against ourselves. But if you test your software with your, with your software, it's always going to be compatible. So we are looking for another ARQ implementation. So this, the, the mode is NAC, so each time you, you lose a packet, you ask for a retransmission, and uh, that's why you have a, a, a longer latency than with FEC. So really, both, both ways of um, protecting your, uh, against packet loss are good, but they have their drawbacks. So it depends on the kind of jitter of our loss uh, your network has. And um, since it's a pipeline, we, we can actually put one behind uh, the other. But really, we should merge them so each one can know that they need to share a, a, a common internal state. So for example, if, if you can correct a packet with FEC, you shouldn't ask for retransmission because it's going to make your bitrate higher and maybe cause more packet loss. So. We still did not, uh, we did not merge it, and actually we don't know how exactly to do it uh, efficiently. So maybe we'll use them uh, either one and the other, but never together. So I was talking about the uh, 7337. Uh, we actually had a FFmpeg-like moment where bo uh, two, two persons were working on competing implementations without telling the others. And uh, we actually committed the two versions, but they are a little bit different because one is a, a, a parser, so it will extract the, the, the payload only, remove the SM, the SUSU 7 header, which you might not need anymore. But in our case, since we are uh, retransmitting on the, on the SDI uh, output, we need to keep the header. So they work a bit differently. Also, the, you can have a 16, 20, or 24 bits mode in the 337. And uh, what the, the parser is only using 16 bits, and the other one is 20 bits. But you, you could modify them uh, if you needed to support uh, another bitness. Uh, we added a free type for text rendering. It's uh, very basic because we don't deal with uh, positioning. If you have a P, for example, the bar of the P is below the, the screen, so you don't see it. But since we only did, needed something simple, we write the text in all caps, and that works for us. So that's cool. Uh, blank source. What this does is uh, generate uh, an empty stream, nothing, so you can have a, you can create your outputs and 
start transmitting nothing which is useful if, if you mix it with um, let's say if if uh, you want to switch programs so you start the output on, a, on an empty source and then you replug the your actual program to the output which already exists and uh, it's going smooth uh, AV sync it's a raw mixer so for, for when when you deal with SDI, uh, each each audio frame is mi mixed together with the video, and you have to send them as one one uh, packet, one block. So we need to synchronize them uh, at the at the sample level, and um, so we use kind of a, we can use a, a blank source for for the video, but for the audio. We are, we are actually uh, based on the output clock. So since the input and output clocks differ, you need to resample the audio so it will fall exactly each time. And uh, we use peaks because with peaks you can uh, do fractional resampling. So going up and down as you need without erring the cracks. If, if you lose one audio sample, you, you would hear here a crack. So with this module we, we have perfect sounding output. Uh, we added V210 decoder after the encoder. So that's the SDI video format. And uh, we made it fast. Actually James made it fast with a uh, AVX2 uh, uh, assembly. And uh, yeah we did uh, more smaller pipes. Zone plate is a, it's a test pattern which is used in a in TV, so instead of a blank source which is black, you could use this one. X0655 encoding, which is uh, still slow. Uh, grid uh, module, which is uh, used with the uh, blank sources, so this is a seamless switchover. You, you you create your output, which would be uh, your TV channel, and you can switch the programs. You connect one source and the other, and uh, they flip in an instant without uh, artifacts. Uh, DTSDI as well, it's a uh, file format, uh, Used in uh, the deck tech tools, if you do uh, raw SDI captures, it's a simple header. Block to sound, which was the the first contribution of uh, a new new contribution new contributor to UPipe. So what it does is uh, you, you you set the the parameters you want from the wave header that you don't have, since it's raw PCM, and uh, you can uh, do a PCM stream from from file. Uh, what's coming? Uh, DVB satellite source, SDI over IP, which is uh, working and uh, on air now, but not yet uh, committed. So, 2022, the old standard, which is working, and we are working on the new one, which was uh, just released last year, and uh, it should be should be working for now. I hope so, and uh, we'll also work on a subframe. Uh, latency uh, encoders and decoders so we can uh, actually uh, transmit or decode the uh, video before the rest of the frame has arrived so let's say if you have a progressive uh, scan of uh, on on your camera you can start working on uh, encoding and transmitting the first lines before the scan is done so that would be cool and uh, of course i hope that uh, some of you will be interested in uh, in joining the project so we are open, we are uh, uh, cool, we are a small project, we are cool, only nice people. So if you are not nice, don't come. <laughs> so. Any question? So are there any questions? I can pass the mic. Yeah. Yes. It's more of a comment uh, on the SRT thing. It doesn't do FEC, and uh, one, it, of the okay. big, the, one of the big features is that they can they try to guess the length of the bandwidth, okay. so that you can uh, inform your encoder. Um, okay, I thought it was doing FEC as well. So no, no, they found that FEC is not useful over the internet. That's what they're. Uh, oh, okay. That they, that it's more efficient to do retransmission. Okay. So that's what the internet. Maybe the yeah, for. it depends on the link. Maybe on, on a ded dedicated link. Uh, yes. FEC would be useful. 
Yeah. So yeah, uh, their definition of low latency is is not that low, basically. They're kind of and I, I was talking about the, the we use the the standard, but when uh, doing the implementation, I realized that you you don't receive the um, you don't know the bit rate at, on the right end of the with transmission. So we had to add a, a custom uh, RTCP uh, packet to send back the bit rate to the to the sender and to do some stats. So. Maybe they tested the, this uh, RFC2 and saw that it wasn't uh, usable for them. Yeah, I know they did a lot of research before going there. It's something that was developed as proprietary software for like five or six years, and they shipped before uh, they open sourced it. Oh, okay. All, all stuff. Someone else? Is there any other question? I have a question. I'm coming, I'm coming. What? He's running. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm coming because you have to be. Uh, in the camera, otherwise people don't hear you at home. They will be happy to hear me. Um, I just wanted to ask if you are using the Dolby E decoder in your workflow. No, because uh, what we do is transmission. So we we transmit the Dolby E as Dolby E. That's the the point of using 337 because the the equipment, all the equipment on the chain understands this format. So we don't need to decode it to to PCM. Because the, the, I mean, Dolby E would be, uh, for example, six channels, but if we send it in the compressed form in 337, we can uh, put fit six channels in two. So decoding would not make sense because we don't have an, any. So did you ever test it? I'm just curious because no. I wasn't really able to no, test the decoder. I didn't. I didn't. Okay, thank you. But I could, I could share samples maybe. Okay, just uh, send me. A Oh, my email is, was on the, on the beginning of the presentation. You can ask me. Uh, hi. You hi. were mentioning wanting to find other, I mean, testing inter interoperability for retransmission. Uh -huh. uh, so there's GStreamer, which is the U pipe for everything else. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, no, but you can try, I mean, essentially there's R RTX support in it. Okay. Is it using the, the, the RFC? Pretty much. I mean, the RFC that you mention is oh. is not the actual implementation of the retransmission. It's a whole okay. bunch of um, recommendations on how you should behave. Okay, I will. Uh, I will so have a look at the uh, uh, retransmit. Thank you. Any other question? No? Nope. Last chance? Nope. Well, thank you, Rafael. Thank you for uh, our attention.